afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's the time of year to plant flowers and the good news is that you have hundreds of choices. But with all the possibilities, it can be a little overwhelming to know what to choose. So today we're going to get some expert advice and we're going to be seeing some of the best new flowers, the ones with the best blooms right through summer and best adapted to our region's climate. Joining me is UVM Extension horticulturalist Leonard Perry. Great to see you. It's always great to be back. Now before we look at some of the best new flowers and hear about some of the flower design courses that you're offering. Let's take a look at some of the plants that you brought today and explain what we're going to be seeing. Okay, Judy, I thought it might be important since there are just so many hundreds, <laughs> thousands, literally, of flowers and vegetables people will be seeing out there to look at a couple of tips on how to choose the best ones. Because okay. a lot of times I find how they grow later in the season is a reflection of how they're growing now in the spring. Mm -hmm. And so what you want is a really good healthy plant like this uh, tomato. Tomato is probably the most common vegetable people plant. You want a good uh, size to the pot, you don't want it too leggy. Tomatoes though, are an exception, can get by with leggy. If they're too tall, you just plant them deeper. You can't do that with other vegetables, but you can plant it at that depth, even if it's too tall, you can just... Yeah, it looks like this one, I mean, it's got some leaves coming out under, yeah, from underneath this. Exactly, soil. and those eventually fall off if they're down there, but mm -hmm. uh, tomatoes good that way, but uh, you do want to look for good green foliage. That means a good sign of nutrition or nice healthy green. Uh, you don't want off colors. That means it's probably hungry. Could be cold. If it's purplish, that means it's not getting phosphorus. It's too cold. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, uh, a r example of a really good uh, tomato. So on the other uh, hand we have a six pack uh, as opposed to a pot and these are zucchini it's a squash that a lot of people plant a very good again leaf color um, it's got a lot of nice leaves real healthy looking plants very vigorous not too lanky or tall on the other hand I got this at a local greenhouse we have one I got at a chain store this is now sad. the problem <laughs> with these yeah, I feel sorry for plants like this they don't they come in they don't get water often so they're really stressed that's one reason you may have small leaves it may not get enough light all these plants are kind of leaning out toward the light. They were under an awning mm -hmm. and nobody was watering. They weren't getting the rain and they were headed out that way. So you notice a difference. It's just um, probably poor nutrition. These will never really grow healthy. So yeah, you may save a little money, but you may not get many if any fruits. So right. that's, a, that's a problem getting plants like that. And finally, I brought a geranium. Again, from a local greenhouse, very healthy, grown here uh, with nice buds on it. You see some of the flowers starting to go by just a little bit, but they don't have disease. What you want to look for on old flowers and any old leaves on the bottom may be dying. It's a gray fuzzy growth. That's called botrytis. It's a gray mold disease. Mm -hmm. So it's a sign plants aren't really healthy like this one. Again, from a oh. chain store, it, look at the difference there. Almost the same price, too. It's amazing. But you can see the difference. Same, similar type leaves, the zonal type. but. Um, it's Again, poor puny. nutrition. Uh, these were totally dried out when I got them and just had to give them a good drink, but that will never really do well. So again, maybe spend a few cents more and get a plant that's really going to reward you with flowers through the season. All right, we also brought a wide selection of pictures that show new flowers and how to combine them. And where are these new flowers now being put on display? Uh, they're down at the Burlington Waterfront. We have mm -hmm. the gardens down there each year. It's a cooperative program with Burlington Parks and Recreation. And we have about 100 new flowers. We have them all labeled. We actually on the signs even have a little QR code. So if you have a phone, you can scan that, <laughs> go right to the list on the website. And so uh, we're going to start with some overall photos of the gardens. I always think that's fun to look at the pictures. And here's a picture last year uh, at the end of the season, uh, how the bed looks. We'll look at some of those individual ones like that bright red salvia later. But uh, also, we, we, as I mentioned, change it each year. This was a previous uh, year going back and a big uh, penicetum or fountain grass there. And just to see the difference each year, we have a lot of different varieties, a few of the same. But uh, it's always fun to see, too. And it's something people can do at home. Uh, this is shortly after planted in June, and uh, that same bed on wow. the right side, and there it is just a couple months later. So it's amazing to see the transition, uh, and especially when you, you know, just seeing it every day, you don't really notice it like the before and after. And here, the front of that bed, back in uh, June, and again, these are from last season, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but then the end of this last season in August, uh, end of August, how that looks, and we'll take a look at, again, a couple of those plants in a minute. Uh, and then another year, you, you see we had imp uh, patients, New Guinea mm -hmm. patients in the front and some petunias, so uh, it changes quite a bit. And then, so that's the main bed. This is the one by the bike path, and you see there we have uh, some geraniums in first of the season and then end of the season. Uh, you see how those <laughs> have grown. We have some 
Montana. We'll look at one of those. And then the grasses in the back, I thought, came out really well. Those are fountain grasses, Pretty. and there's a couple. The uh, lighter color is Skyrocket. The darker one is called Rubrum. And we, I said, why not alternate those? And you can see this so dark light, dark light. It really made a nice effect. So um, even when you just, like us, we have a lot of plants in a small space, you can play with some design, as we'll show a couple of tips. In a previous year, back in August of 13, that same bed, all these petunias in, in the front, and then that um, fountain grass is called vertigo. That's a real vigorous one. If you have, you know, you need some space for that one, it just really <laughs> takes off. It's like a grass on steroids. And then by the boathouse, we have uh, three tiered beds on different levels, and we do different things. A lot of times we put petunias in, uh, as we did this uh, past year, on those. And then, as I mentioned, uh, we do have the signage there with the, with the code. This is an All America Selections Garden, and we get support from Greenworks, the uh, professional association, a couple of growers that provide a lot of the vegetative plants we'll look at, and then, of course, in the parks and recreation, it helps plant and maintain these beds. So what does the All America Selections mean? Well, it's a national uh, program, Judy. It's kind of like the Emmy Awards for new flowers. <laughs> the, uh, they're grown from seed. They have to bloom the first year um, <clears throat> from seed, even if they're perennial. Um, but they are the best of the new ones that have been uh, trialed around the country in some gardens. And then they're sent out to display gardens and released. And so I brought a few examples of some of these, uh, what they did the best for us, just because they did good other places and maybe some other years they may not do always good here but uh, Gallardia is a good example some years done do great it really likes it warmer and hotter um, if it's a mild winter it might overwinter some of these it's called blanket flower Mesa yellow it's about a foot high and pretty yellow kind of goldy yellow flower and very good flowering on that so that's mm -hmm. a good one there's another uh, blanket flower uh, that also did well Arizona apricot uh, that uh, you know, some years hasn't done so well, but that's again a, a kind of a, a bicolor there, if you will, orange, orangey in it. But a, again, a, kind of reminds you of those Arizona pictures you see in the desert. Uh, and then this is another one that I really like. This is an All America winner, um, a recent one from this past year, and I actually saw it the other day in a greenhouse, a local greenhouse for sale, um, grown from seed. It's called African Sunset, and it's a real pretty salmon color. It has darker salmon flowers that come out, and then lighter salmon. It's just a really unique color. And again, that's something, these All Americas, again, you can buy seeds if you get them early enough in the season, grow them yourself, as you can these zinnias. Now, the Profusion, a series is a really nice lower series, foot or less high, but some real good flowering. Again, we rate these <clears throat> into the season to see how well they'll do, and these all were taken into the season. They're still producing real well. So you have the salmon, and then you have the double hot cherry, which is a really bright one. You really have to be, you know, careful what you put that <laughs> with, you know, and some of these bright colors, um, but going with the purples in the background or, or even whites, a contrast would be nice for those. And here is a good example of a white. Now, the osteospermum, that's how you say that, it's a South African daisy. When they first came out, they really didn't do too well up here, but they bred uh, more tolerance to climates like ours. Yeah, I like and that look, that's pretty. That is, you know, it's like a daisy, but it's actually from South Africa. It's very thicker leaves to it. It's an annual, all these are annuals. And, um, and as you can see, that some of the newer ones really do bloom better. Some don't, but we've got that all in past years on our website too, I'll give it the end. Uh, so you can see some of the others and how they, they've done. Now the Moonsong Deep Orange is it came out a few years ago, All America Selection, 2010. That is just a beautiful uh, large marigold with those orange flowers about three inches across. They're wow. really pretty big. It's a really vigorous, good plant. I, I love to use it. And the sweet alyssum, the dark night, isn't is not an All-America selection, but I uh, just wanted to show the interplanting here and how the nice contrast of the purple low flowers with the, uh, and that's kind of the thing we've started doing more with the upright, taller ones interplanted in between. So it's a nice, gives a nice effect, the contrasting colors, contrasting height, and a little more variety than just having all these different flowers lined up. And we combined it with this Persian Shield as well. Again, the Persian Shield is not an All-America winner, but it did combine well with that Moonsong Deep Orange. 
Again, you can see the orange and the purple contrast. Now, the Persian shield is a foliage plant. You grow it for the mm -hmm. purplish leaves and really mixes in nice, as you can see here, or with that white daisy we saw earlier, that would be a great combination. And so that's just another um, good one. And this one is great. Um, this end of the season and looks um, <clears throat> good, uh, especially into the fall. Wow, great. Well, what were some of the other top-rated flowers uh, last summer here in Burlington, maybe that were not part of the All-American program? Okay, um, Judy, yeah, we uh, do quite a few, and we, again, these all rated quite highly, the next group, um, the top of the line at the end of the season, and these are vegetative. They weren't grown from seed. They were grown from cuttings. That's mm -hmm. what that means, and we got them from these growers. So while we take a look at some of the best, there's a Diamond Delight Spurge, which is just really nice, and that's um, one that is, you know, mixes in well with a lot of things. It's that white color, which again, kind of, if you want to, don't know what to put with it, <laughs> try a white. Kufia is often called cigar flower from those little flowers. Right, this yeah. is about a foot high. There's a many different ones, different colors too, but this is more the traditional orange, but that's a nice one. It can, is right next to that white one we just saw, uh, and that came out real well, that Kufia vermilionaire. Now the spider flower is a really, it's almost like a shrub, gets about maybe three feet high. Senorita Rosalita, I love that <laughs> name to say that, it rolls right off there. It's the taller one that first came out, and in the back you see a shorter one. Take a look at that. That's a more recent introduction, Pequina Rosalita, which means small. So it's maybe six inches, eight inches less. So a little bit shorter, uh, more compact plant, but the same effect with those spidery type flowers. Um, the calabracoas are trailing petunias, not really petunias, but uh, super bells. Um, you see many types of those, a lot of them don't do well at the end of the season. Cherry red did quite well, as you can see, the end of the summer last year for us, as did strawberry punch. So again, it, it, those would be nice together with that the red kind of contrasting, picking up on that red in the center of that uh, super bells. A couple of new salvias, that, um, uh, Blazon series. Uh, there's Tabasco, it's a red. These are the traditional uh, sages, uh, scarlet sages, and then the purple, which was a real, real pretty color as well, and goes well with that cigar flower we saw earlier. Another salvia, um, contrast again, interplanted with that coleus, lime thyme. So again, contrasting colors, something I really like. Now these are the more upright type of salvias, a little bit different from that one we just saw, the traditional type. Another upright one called blue emotion, again, interplanted underneath with the fan flower, the scavola, the pink wonder. So again, a pink ground cover with those blue like flowers that. coming out, which I thought came out well. And then another one that is often called Texas Sage, the Summer Jewel Series. Uh, the red was All-America winner. These were actually All-America winners too. A pink and there's a white one uh, for this year we'll have down there. So the three different scarlet sages. Uh, a couple of petunias, so Whispers Blue is a real pretty color. I just love that. And then one that um, I really like too, the color, is the black cherry. That's kind of a new real dark red one. Kind of went well with that limoncello, so a, a couple of the primary colors there really contrasting for a special effect. And I love that effect, you know, very pastel-y colors. There's Sophinia series, mm -hmm. Heavenly Blue, along with the Supertunia series, the Rose Vein. So again, <clears throat> and then a Lantana, a more upright one of those, a real Bananarama, I love that name too, but a lot of flowers into the season, but a nice compact. And then there are many new begonias, the Bolivian begonias is something to look for. Very unusual, great in hanging baskets. It's one of my favorites. Now you're offering a summer course actually uh, on flower garden design and anyone can learn more about this. Exactly, Judy, through continuing uh, ed at UVM. And um, there's uh, just a lot of things people can learn a lot more about how to design all these flowers, learn a lot about perennials, design basics and how to plan. You actually end up with a plan at the end. You don't need any prior knowledge. We have a great <laughs> reference book, a gardening reference can read. It's online at your own pace uh, and through correspondence, emails and, and meetings with me as needed. Uh, now is the month to register for that and you can have all summer to do it and really learn a lot about design. Now, I don't usually have good luck with petunias. Can you give me a tip on what makes a good petunia? Um, just the right site, a lot of sun uh, for petunias mm -hmm. and um, keep them watered and uh, a lot of the new ones don't need that cleaning. They just um, like the older ones did. Well, that's great. And also you, we should mention too that you have your website, of course. Of course. And that's where people can find out more about the course and all these flowers that we were talking about. Just go to perrysperennials.com, the home gardener section. You can go to see the courses, the research section. You can look at the waterfront park and you all get, those lists. And get some ideas for your garden. 
Thanks exactly. a lot, Leonard. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.